It is Friday, so that means it's time for our Rush Hour Roundtable. We do want to continue the conversation about today's top story. Of course, a judge unsealing that search warrant for the FBI raid on former President Trump's Mar-a-Lago home. So let's introduce you to today's panel. We have Nigel Laskowski, co-host of the radio show Hammer and Nigel, afternoon drive show on 93.1 WIBC in Indianapolis. Next, Angela Sinadella, attorney and legal analyst and TikTok's premier legal voice. We also have Brad Palumbo, policy correspondent at the Foundation for Economic Education. And last but not least, John Fugelsang, actor, comedian, and host of Tell Me Everything on Sirius XM. All right, panel, I am anticipating a very lively discussion this evening. Of course, unprecedented search and you know we now know a little bit more about these classified documents but do americans have more answers to their questions angela you are an attorney let's start with you nicole i don't think americans have any answers because they are fixated right now on the contents of this search warrant but let me tell you a secret about prosecutors so prosecutors across the country will have these charges that they want to bring against somebody but they don't have the evidence yet so you know what they will do they will use a search warrant for something that they know they will find to be able to go in and look for that evidence this happens across america and why you see search warrants for drug charges all the the time. Nobody cares whether or not somebody, a criminal, has drugs in their apartment, but that's always used for the prosecutors to be able to go in and see, is there a weapon? Is, was there a robbery? Like, it's just used as an example. And here, I think it's the exact same thing. All right, Angela, I certainly uh, I want to dig into that a little bit. But, but first, let's go around the panel here. You know, Nigel, what do you think? I mean, do you think that, that Americans have more answers at this point? No, we're basically still in the same situation we were yesterday. The warrant says there's top secret info. Trump says there's no top secret info. Here's the most important question. Your guests asked it at the top of the hour. What's in that affidavit? What information did the judge see to make them say, oh, hey, wait a minute. We got to go in there and get this stuff. And why did the judge give the Justice Department and the FBI a ton of time to execute it if it were such a detriment to national security? They waited days to execute this warrant that they claim had national security implications. What was the emergency? Is this why you went through Melania's underwear drawer? I don't get it. There are no answers until we see that affidavit. Well, John, what do you think? Every square inch of this building has cameras in it. If Donald Trump uh, has footage of agents behaving in any untoward way, ransacking, raiding, going through Melania's undergarments, we would have seen them by now. The lies are going to keep coming, and that's the only thing that we can completely keep track of. I, I got to say, this decade has proven the most unprecedented thing about America now is our unprecedented abuse of the word unprecedented. I do think that we are not going to learn a lot right away, and we may never know. There's a very good chance that the government got back what it wanted, and this will go away, and we will never be given a satisfactory explanation. All right, Brad, before we get to you, John, I, I want to clarify this. You said the lies will keep coming. The lies from which side or are you just saying across the board? Oh, I'm sorry, the lies from the uh, former host of Celebrity Apprentice, which, you know, New Yorkers have been accustomed to for quite a long time. This was not unprecedented. They, they, they had a request, the documents were returned, but not all, and then a subpoena was ignored in the spring. Um, this was done deliberately with the most sensitivity possible. If it's not possible. unprecedented, was which, in which there was no one has standing had their there, searched. And it was only the staff and the Secret Service who let the federal agents in. It wasn't a lawless raid. That's Breonna Taylor. All right. Well, Brad, you, you know, you brought up a point there. Go ahead, Brad. Yeah, I just want to know the name of the former president who's had their home searched before, because it might not be unprecedented, but that'd be news to me and a lot of people. It's never happened before in history. We never had a president. So take that's what an unprecedented, that's kind of the definition of the word. And I, I think yeah. we can debate whether this is appropriate without downplaying the significance of the oh, FBI executing a search warrant against a former really president and the Department of Justice, a Biden appointee, signing off on that before it happened. I mean, the FBI has a credibility crisis in this country. They've been revealed uh, to have people, all sorts of things they've gotten wrong, all going all the way back to sure. when they surveilled and blackmailed Martin Luther King Jr. up until more recently when we saw evidence leak that agents were biased against Trump. I think people have a lot of questions of these agencies and what they've done, and we don't have a lot of answers yet. The search warrant is really just the beginning. We'll have to see where it goes, but I I, I don't want us to downplay how significant this is, and, and there should... It. 
there should be real accountability if this was anything other than 100% by the book, ample evidence. I and it's it legit to the accountability? I see, I, I am certain that this search warrant was definitely by the book. In order for Attorney General Garland to go this far, he had to make sure all of his I's were dotted, all of his T's were crossed. That to me is not a question. This search warrant was legit. And this is why it's only about classified documents. But my opinion is that they were actually looking for criminal evidence to bring potential charges that are much bigger than this, right? Related to the Capitol riots. And they were using this as a ruse to go in. But this search warrant, I think, is going to be all by the books, and a judge is going to affirm that if it's contested. Well, but and that would be a fishing expedition, what you're saying. And I get that that's common. I do. But that's exactly. unfortunate. That, that is what prosecutors do all the but time, whether it's to a law. president so or another anytime person. Anytime you get a search warrant to go anywhere, then you have access to everything that you are being given access to. And so this is also why you should never, ever let cops or agents into your home voluntarily. If they come into your home <laughs> for a cup of coffee, they see any evidence of crime there, well, you're screwed. <laughs> Well, so I want to let's get into that, you know, because Angela, you you know, you alluded, alluded, alluded to it initially and then got into a little bit more. But I want to ask the panel, you know, what do you think the, the, the ultimate goal is here, you know, from the Department of Justice? What do you think we they are looking for, I guess, so to speak? What, what is their end game? John, what do you think? I mean, the real question is, who was the source here? They knew exactly what room to go to and where specific documents were. So there's a lot of speculation who that could have been. Many are saying it was a Secret Service agent or could have been on the inside. Uh, in terms of what they were looking for, the reality is Merrick Garland does not owe us that explanation. That's how these things work. And so it very well could have been a fishing expedition. Lord knows they got Al Capone because of his taxes. Uh, and at this point, if they have truly downloaded the president's servers, they've got a lot of things he might not want them to know about. This happens the same week a president took the unprecedented step of pleading the fifth 440 times in a four hour deposition. It's unprecedented all over. Well, so, you know, you say Merrick Garland doesn't doesn't owe the American people an explanation, but I think that there are some people who, who would probably argue with that. I mean, maybe he doesn't legally or technically owe the American morally people. Morally, he does. Mor morally, he should explain Yeah, Nigel, Nigel, what do you think? I mean, what do you think the, the end game is here? I think the word unprecedented is thrown around here a lot. And, you know, it, it was certainly unprecedented when the FBI lied to the FISA court to spy on the Trump campaign. It was certainly unprecedented when Adam Schiff said he had evidence of Russian collusion. I mean, God, why was it there a raid in Adam Schiff's backyard? He, he said he had the evidence in the shed of Russian collusion. Please give me a break. This kind of sounds like the FBI said go in there and find something. There was no need for a raid. Trump uh, was, com uh, uh, was complying and cooperating with the raid in June. Why didn't the FBI seize this stuff when they were there in June is the big question. He ignored a subpoena. He did not turn it over with the initial documents he gave. Oh, he ignored a subpoena. He was, in the spring. he was cooperating with the FBI. They, they said, right. come and get it. He said, come and, and by get the way, it. the head of the FBI is a Trump appointee. So uh, Donald Trump was not cooperating. He had not returned the documents. He had said he would return, and he had ignored a subpoena <laughs> issued in the spring. I think these are exactly the questions when Nicole asked in the beginning, do the American public, does the American public still have questions? Yes, we need answers to this because yeah. we have no idea exactly to what extent Trump's team has or has not cooperated with them. So to the extent that Garland tells all of us, look, we're trying to take the least intrusive step possible. We don't know the answers to that. And we'll only find out if we know whether or not Trump has truly ignored subpoenas even past this, in the, past the June investigation and seeing what's happened and, and transpired this last month. All right, Angela, that, that was the bow that we will put on that discussion. Obviously, uh, many more answers that we are looking for to all of our questions. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.